Breathe less. You don't get breathless. When you breathe short, your life becomes breathtaking. Namaskar. My salutations to each one of you. My prostrations. Namaskar, Arun. Krishna who is in each one of you. The important aspect about breath is not the knowledge of breath, but the application of breath. It, knowledge will not do the transformation. It is the action which will do transformation in your life. For that, we have to be aware of one Kriya. And when do we have to be aware? Answer is 24-7. We call that Kriya doorway meditation. Doorway meditation. In the morning Kriya, we realized that we step out of the bed with the dominant side, with the dominant feet. When we walk out of the room, we walk out with the dominant feet. When we talk about doorway meditation, whenever we cross a threshold, when you are entering into a room, go with the dominant feet. When you're coming out of any room, any room, come out with the dominant feet. You're getting into the bathroom, go with the dominant feet. Going out of the house, go out with the dominant feet. Coming back to house, come back with the dominant feet. So every time, whatever you are trying to do, do it with your dominant feet. Similarly, you utilize your dominant side. For instance, you pick up a cup of tea, pick it up with your dominant hand. You're brushing your teeth. At least first few seconds, do it with your dominant hand. You're bathing, take the shower on the dominant side. You're combing your hair, hold the comb with that. So get into that habit. You're wearing shoes, you're brushing, you're bathing, whatever, whatever you are doing, do it with your dominant hand or dominant feet, dominant side. So that is called doorway meditation. You are in awareness 24-7. Any time and every time, you cannot, the moment you leave your awareness, you are out of it. You are out of dominant, uh, doorway meditation. Doorway med as long as you are in awareness, you are in do doorway meditation. So just having the knowledge will not help you. You have to apply. Application is doorway meditation. This is quite a simple Kriya but you have to be aware 24 seven. While having food also, you're touching the plate, touch it with your dominant hand. Of course, you're going to eat with right hand. Most of us will eat with right hand, but then touch it with that. If you are praying, somebody asked me this question a few months ago, that should I pray with the left hand? The answer is no, you have to pray with the right hand only even if your dominant side is left. So what do you do? You touch with your left hand, the right hand, and do the prayers with like this. You touch your right hand with the left hand. If your dominant, if the dominance is left. If you start eating food, so first, if your dominant side is left, you with your left hand, touch the plate, left hand, you touch your right hand and take that first bite. And that's all. And then you can go on with the right hand. So this is doorway meditation. This is quite simple, but may not be very simple to apply because you have to be aware 24 seven. The moment you lose awareness, you are out of doorway meditation. 
this sounds very simple but this is one practice which can change your life forever forever because the objective of life is to be in consciousness and this is one kriya which proves that you are in consciousness so all of you right from now i mean of course all of you have got that nadi gyanam you are aware which side is dominant whether your left channel is dominant or your you are aware of it but now awareness is one just by merely awareness that is called nadi gyanam you are one in a million but by doing this doorway you become even um, i mean rare of the rarest is breath and prana the same thing breath is a vehicle and prana is a passenger amazingly medical science does not talk about prana 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 shakti they have a different word for it which is almost near to pran but not exactly equal to pran and that word is atp atp in uh, chinese we call it chi prana shakti in uh, japanese we call it kai and it is the life force in a human body if you remove prana what is left is dead body in a statue if you add prana what happens it becomes god so that's the power of prana so human body minus prana is equal to dead body any statue in a temple plus prana is equal to god arun can you say prana is uh, spirit prana is could it could it not be not exactly spirit but yes for the understanding sake we may say so but not exactly spirit every culture has different word for it and uh, as i said in medical science they use the word atp uh, adenosine Uh, triphosphate if i correctly remember the word that's the word they use atp atp is not exactly prana but almost equivalent to prana ah uh, sir i have a doubt with this uh, uh, like you uh, compared the uh, breathing and the prana as the vehicle and the passenger right so uh, is it somehow possible that the vehicle may go empty so breathing may be there but the prana is not there uh that that does happen in old age it does happen yes your breath does not contain that much of prana the content of prana reduces that's why when we go for a morning walk you get more prana the morning breath has more prana in it see even food has prana water has prana uh, sunlight has prana even if, when you are in a good relationship when you are in a happy relationship even that gives you prana when a relationship breaks you feel as if the prana has come out so not only breath but even good sleep gives you you know you you, you revive yourself so if you are sick yes the prana there is less prana into your breath when you are sick so is it vitality it it is vitality yes it is vitality it is that uh, that uh, vital life force okay it is that if there is an imbalance into prana it will cause tiredness so you don't feel very fresh right thank you sir hmm. and
you see, in the yogic terms, uh, prana is carried by the by the nadis. All these nadis we have seventy two thousand nadis. So these each of these nadi is carrying prana. These channels, these channels are invisible channels in the body. We, uh, in, from the yogic perspective, when say when we talk, from the spiritual perspective, when we talk, these channels. So these channels they carry prana. You remember in the previous class we had spoken about Dhananjay. So when the prana came out of the body, Dhananjay was still carrying on some activities. So some channels were working. Now, let us talk about three channels which are primarily left, right, and equal, Sushumna. So the left channel is called Ida, we all know that. Right channel is called Pingala. And when it is equal, when your breath is equal, when it is 50-50 exactly, then it is Sushumna. Left is responsible for emotional aspect, mental aspect, and right is responsible for physical aspect. And equal, when it is equal, when both the channels are equal, when it is Sushumna, then it is the spiritual aspect. So you can do all the spiritual activities when Sushumna is active. You can do all the physical activities when uh, right channel, Pingala is active. You can do all the emotional activities. Uh, you want to write a poetry. If your left channel is operative, you'll write better poetry. But you want to play a game, you want to play badminton, then of course, right channel should be operative. You'll play better. You'll pl play a better game. If you play in left, maybe you lose the game. Maybe. Left channel is more inward oriented, you know, the more inward oriented activities. And right channel will be more outward oriented. And when it is Sushumna, when it is equal, then it is self-observation. You get that heightened power to observe yourself. Because we seldom observe ourselves. And it's not easy to do that self-observation. Ida is more responsible for artistic, creative activities. And uh, when it is Sushumna, then more intuitive activities are possible. Intuitive means which is, which does not require your intellect. Something beyond the intellect. Those activities are possible to be done. For instance, you want to decide something with all your knowledge, with all your intellect, you cannot decide. There are three choices before you, whether to marry this person or this person or this person, and they're all equal. Now, how do you decide? It's very difficult. So in Sushumna, you can get that help because you can take intuitive decisions because these are not logical decisions. Whom to marry cannot be a logical decision. Catherine is smiling. <laughs> if you are into music, with your left channel, is better. If you are into meditation also, you'll perform better meditation when your left channel is operative. How when your left channel is how operative. About, how about yoga? Yoga also with left. And yoga means the light yoga, but if you do vigorous ones, then right, of course, because physical strength is required. To begin with left, but then gradually take over right. If you're doing Surya Namaskar, of course you require uh, right nostril. Then you want to 
uh, get some fresh idea, some idea generation, left nostril. Then any Gyanendriya where, you know, your five senses, knowledge senses are applicable. So that will happen better with uh, left nostril. And Karmendriya, any action or action five action organs. You know the difference between Gyanendriya and Karmendriya? Gyanendriya is, you know, how do you get knowledge? Through your eyes, through your ears, through your nose, through your uh, tongue, through your skin. So this is how you gather knowledge. So all that will happen better through if your left nostril is operative. If your right nostril is operative, then Karmendriya. That means you can do anything which is hand oriented, feet oriented, you know, mouth oriented, uh, defecation, urination, all that. Then your more feminine activities are better. When I say feminine, that doesn't mean it, uh, it relates to ladies only, it relates to females only, no, to anybody, but more feminine, more, you know, uh, soft activities, feminine activities. So if your left nostril is active, then no, more feminine activities can be done. And when your right is uh, operative, then more masculine activities can be done. Let us take an example. For instance, you have to pick up some heavy luggage and, and keep it in the Almira. Now that requires that, that is a masculine activity. So that so if your right nostril is operative, you can do it more uh, in a better way. Otherwise, what, what, may, what might happen is you might hurt yourself. While dragging the bag, you might hurt yourself. So that may happen. So if you are doing the activities with the right kind of no, nostril, left activities with the left nostril and right activity with the right nostril, then the perfection is more. The kind of uh, productivity uh, you achieve will be much more. So we, we have understood that left is lunar. Lunar is which provides coolness. And right is solar, which provides heat. Now all the you know relaxing activities, you want to just lie down on the sofa, you want to sit and relax, uh, you want to sit on the swing, left-oriented activity. Sir, so I had a little query in this. Uh, yes. As we are going on to understand uh, uh, that Pingla and Ida, uh, you know, they are, you know, more favorable for a certain kind of activities. Mm -hmm. So, like, my mind is confused between two line of thoughts. One, mm -hmm. which says that while we are doing a particular activity, a particular route of breathing is more uh, preferred by the body or rather the body tends to go more in that direction or are we trying to say that if at all we have to do a certain kind of activity we have to somehow reach to that route of breathing no we have to reach for the, to that uh, kind of breathing you have to wait to get that breathing or you have to change your breathing for that activity for instance, you want to go down and pick up a luggage from your car and bring it upstairs. Preferably, you do it with your right nostril. Otherwise, but you sir, might hurt yourself. But sir, I mean, uh, I, I, does that remain very practically possible to consciously uh, yes. make that happen all the time? Yes, yes, yes. It is practical, and uh, I've been doing. I've been doing it. I've been following it. Most of the time, if not 100% times, most of the times I've been following it. I've been doing this doorway meditation for last uh, seven to eight years and also following these activities based on um, the dominance of the nostril. As we go along, you know, you'll how to change the nostril. For instance, your question is valid from one perspective that if my left nostril is active at the moment and uh, my wife tells me, go and get that luggage from the car. No, obviously. Exactly. Uh, uh, if you say, no, no, I won't go now. I'm waiting for my right nostril to be operated. Exactly, exactly. Uh, there'll be war at home. Uh, <laughs> so so uh, what I can do is 
within few minutes i can change my nostril from left to right we'll discuss that just after this topic we'll discuss sure. that how sir. to change your nostril tick 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 thank you sir. thank you sir. and uh, when you are doing any activity which requires more receptivity when you are at calm you have to listen for instance you are listening to my lecture so you will do it better with your left nostril any kind you you attend a classroom session you will do better with your left nostril if your left nostril is uh, operative you absorb more when with your right nostril something which requires more more uh, you know pranic energy that kind of activity you can do better and uh, in the medical terms we call it parasympathetic nerve system operates when left nostril is dominant and right no uh, uh, nostril sympathetic nervous system that means when we say sympathetic nervous system that means fight or flight S symptoms are there and when parasympathetic when we talk then it is rest and digest so after food what would what, what would you like to do after food you want to relax you had your good lunch after that you 10 minutes you want to just relax you don't want to do anything so if the left nostril is active at that time you can relax better all the leisure activities you can do better with left, your left nostril Uh, but digestive system is operative with your right nostril only you should take your lunch dinner only when your right nostril is operative otherwise the food it will uh, it wouldn't digest or it will take longer to digest it might cause food poisoning also it might cause indigestion also now what about uh, public speaking this is very important many people have asked me this question So that when you go on the stage to speak how do you speak if your right nostril is operative you will give a better speech there are some other rules also when we speak about tatvas we'll add that also to public speaking tatvas we haven't spoken which tatva for what so we haven't spoken about that so public speaking is right nostril because this one question is often asked by lot of people uh any auspicious work you want to do do it with your left nostril now one important thing now this is the most important aspect about left nostril you see the shape of the nose is like this it's a it's a triangle so when you breathe from left it goes and hits your right brain when you breathe from right it goes and hits your left brain so when you are breathing from left your right brain is active so right brain is responsible for creativity you want to write a poetry you will write better poetry if your right brain is active if you are trying to solve a maths problem you will do better with your left brain that means right breathing if your right nostril is breathing right is dominant so left is active you will do better in your maths exam during the when you are solving that problem if your left brain is operative you will be able to solve that problem arun which uh, which brain is active when you get shushuma that means when you are both yes good somebody asked this question the mid brain is active so this is the left activates right brain right activates left brain and sushumna activates mid brain mid brain is responsible for intuitiveness mid brain is responsible for balancing the two acts mid brain is responsible for out of the box thinking see a logical mind can take you up to a point not beyond that but mid brain will take you beyond that uh 
uh, Arunji, is this means if your Sushmana Nadi is active, means uh, you are doing everything, whatever activities you are doing is uh, out of the box or excellent or beyond the words? Is no, it means? no, not exactly. The, actually, Sushumna means if you are doing, you are a research scholar. So you want to do some creative thinking. I mean, Sushumna, you can do better thinking. You can uh, think uh, something which is which you haven't studied. Otherwise, what will happen is uh, you, your mind will not go beyond whatever uh, you have seen on internet, whatever you have studied, whatever you know, whatever you have heard, all that. So your mind is uh, limited to that. If you have not yeah. studied a subject, how will you know about it? You don't know. But in when you, when your sushumna is active, it can go beyond that also. Okay. Uh, yeah. When your sushumna is active, your mind can go beyond that also. Because sometimes creative ideas uh, may happen because of that sushmana uh, that is uh, active all the time. Then yes. so many ideas and creation is comes in mind. Absolutely. If you are under the influence of sushumna, yes, creative thoughts will come. Yeah. And th th those thoughts not only comes, but uh, we can, means I have seen it actually happened during the uh, time, some time period, after some time period, I have seen that those thoughts, whatever comes, uh, happened in practical. Excellent. This is also means because of Sishmana A word of caution here, Vaishali ji, if your Shuna is active, don't do any worldly activity. Whatever worldly activity you will do, you will flop. Okay. For instance, your Sushumna is active. You're trying to call somebody to do some business. Mm -hmm. That work will flop. So you cannot do any worldly activity, any money-making activity, mm -hmm. when Sushumna is active. Worldly activity only with left dominance or right dominance. When it is equal, then only spiritual activity. Is that uh, business activity is also yes yes spiritual? yes yes absolutely spiritual. See, when business. I told you that uh, you'll do doorway meditation, if it is left dominant, you can go out of the home with the left feet. If it is right dominant, then you go out with the home from the right feet. But when it is equal, how do you do? You can't jump out with both your feet outside. Mm -hmm. Yes. So idea is to hold on. Go after one minute. Don't leave your home at that moment. If Sushumna is active, don't leave your home at that moment. So most of the time if Sushumna is active, then... No, no, no. Most, not most of the time. Only a few moments Sushumna is active. We'll discuss right now. When is Sushumna oh. active? Okay. We'll discuss okay. about it. But when you're talking about like business uh, decisions, right? You're not talking about business ideas. No. Sorry, because intuition is needed. Sir, I mean to ask is that you're talking about business decisions, right? Or business ideas. Intuition is still needed for like money making as well, right? So you're talking about not to make decisions or like any ideas. Should I educate when it is active? Don't, don't make any decisions and don't do any activity, any worldly yes, activity. Yes. Neither to make a decision nor to make an activity. Neither, neither to decide nor to do anything. You, you can do prayers, you can do yoga, you can do meditation, you can do chanting, you can do, you can do any spiritual act. You can do charity, you can do all that. But you can't uh, do a worldly act. Shouldn't do. No. Not shouldn't, it'll flop. You should know. Okay. Dis disastrous. Uh, um, why is that so? Could I ask the reason? It is It is mentioned in the Shastras. That's all. Let okay. us not try to understand this topic of breath through logic. Mm. Okay. Because logic has nothing to do with it. Logic has nothing to do with it. The, the, the best things in life don't happen because of logic. You don't lo love somebody because of logic. You don't say somebody, I love you from my head. You always say, I love you from my heart. So logic, uh, 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 most of the things in life does not happen. Life does not follow logic at all. 
Uh, Arunji, um, yeah. here I would like to understand, like, is it possible for us to use both our nostrils and activate both our, uh, use both our left and right brain simultaneously? Or do it alternately, uh, alternatively? After no, if you, if you want to do prayers, you want to go to church, you want to do meditation, you want to do charity, you want to uh, help society, you want to go to Gurudwara, then yes, both the nostrils equal. Wonderful. Okay. Okay. You, you, for instance, you want to sit for prayer. If both your nostrils are operative, if Sushumna is active, you will feel like doing that prayer. Otherwise, that prayer will become uh, uh, boring Medium. for you. Okay. Okay. Hmm. And there are ways to activate Sushumna. We'll discuss today only. Okay. Okay. So this aspect is, uh, normally there, there's one more rule that uh, daytime activities are done more with left nostril and nighttime activities are done more with right nostril. Anyway, now the question is just somebody was asking that, should I wait for uh, um, that nostril if I have to do some activity uh, which, is, which requires left nostril and I have right nostril dominant right now? No, you don't have to wait. You can change your nostril. You don't have to wait. You have to. Now, how does it change? It can change on its own accord. Every 60 to 90 minutes, your breath would change from left to right, right to left. And when it changes, for some moment, for a few seconds, there'll be sushumna. The transition is through sushumna. If my right is operative, then for a few seconds, it will become, say, one hour, my right is operative. After one hour, for 20, 30 seconds, Sushumna will be operative. And then my left will start operating. So, so left to right, right to left, in between transition will be Sushumna. With your mental strength also, you can change it. Some people, yogis, they don't do anything. Just with their power of their yogic strength, mental strength, they can change their breath. They want left to operate. In my one meditation session, I, um, there was one lady, she could do anulom vilom without, without using her fingers. Many people can do that. So you want your left to inhale, left will inhale. You want your right to exhale, right will exhale. You want your right to inhale, your right will inhale. So you can do that. That's possible. I've seen it with many people. So that's the power of your mental strength. You might have seen when you go to India, when you go to the villages, if you go to the village fair, there, there are certain, you know, monks, certain sadhus on the roadside. They use that stick. They keep a stick and they keep their hand like this. Have you seen that? Have you seen such uh, monks? Doing that? Yes, that is called yoga dand. That is called yoga dand. That if you keep it on left side, what will happen is your left channel will block. Your left nostril will block. Your right will open. If you keep it this side, your right will block. Your open left will open. And what do you do if you keep both your hands like this? If you keep yoga dand on both the side, your sushumna will start. So you might have seen these yogis. They want to keep their sushumna all the time because they have not, they don't do any worldly activities. They are connected with divine all the time. So they want to be in sushumna all the time. You are sitting in your office. Make sure that you don't take any decision while your sushumna is operative. Because that decision will turn disastrous. Now, you want to activate your right nostril, you can do Surya Vedi Pranayam also. Your left is operative at the moment. You want your right to start, do Surya Vedi. Surya Vedi means with your Vishnu Mudra, inhale from right, exhale from right. Inhale from right, or exhale from right. And do it a little fast. So you do that, your right will become operative in few minutes. If you do Chandra Vedi, that means inhalation from left and ex exhalation also from left. So Chandra Vedi is done slowly 
and Surya Bedi is done little fast. Remember this. Because Chandra Bedi produces coolness and Surya Bedi produces heat. And normally in the summers we don't do Surya Bedi. In the winters we do Surya Bedi because we want heat. If you are in a, into a cold climate, you do more Surya Bedi, you will get heat into your body. Then there is Sheetli Pranayam to activate your left nostril. Pulling through your tongue. You can also do through your teeth. But pulling through your tongue, you elongate and make your tongue roundish and take the air inside. It will cool your whole system. So your left nostril will get operated. Get operative. Then there are many other ways. For instance, your sitting posture. How do you sit? You're sitting, if you sit with your cross feet, your legs are crossed. So if you're keeping your right feet on your left feet, at that, you know, at those, those joints are locked. When you're locking one joint in the feet or in the hand, you're keeping your hand in a such a posture. So if you, your sitting posture could also activate right or left, depending the way you're sitting. You can make a guess, the person in front of you, whether he's breathing from left or right, looking at his sitting posture. If he's keeping his right feet on, on his left feet, that means he's breathing from his right nostril. Chances are he's breathing from right nostril. Another one is you can sleep. If you sleep towards left, then your right nostril will get activated. If you sleep towards right, your left nostril will get activated. Here it is interesting to mention about uh, first aid of first aid of breathing. If you see a sick person or there is a sick person at home and the person cannot change his sights on his own. You should change his, his or her sights every one and one hour or one and a half hour or two hours. You should change the sights. You will be helping. The person will recover faster from illness. If the person cannot change on his own, then you should do that. If you're visiting an old age home, same thing applies. You'll do a great favor to those people who are lying on the bed if you just change their side. If they are sleeping towards left, make it right. If they are sleeping towards right, make it left. So that their breathing changes. They'll feel better. Have you seen a small child? You know, sometimes child behaves very cranky. Without a reason, child starts crying and all that, all that. You have seen that. So you know, if his left breath is, he's sleeping towards left, you turn him to right. If he's sleeping towards right, turn him towards left. But certain child are very cranky. They won't let you do that also. They won't let you touch them also. Certain small children, they won't let you touch. The moment you touch, they, they start shouting. So what do you do? You can put some cotton in the ear. If a child is sleeping towards left, so obviously his, his right ear is visible, right ear is exposed. So you can put some ear, cotton, block his right ear with that cotton. Within few minutes, you would see the child would say, change his side and he'll become okay. So this is the first aid, whether it applies to children or you can do it for yourself. You're not in good mood. Change your breath. Sometimes you realize that you're not in good mood. Change your breath. That's it. Hmm. So that is the first aid. So whether it, uh, elderly people or sick people, they cannot do it themselves. You have to help them to do it by changing their side. You are not in good mood. You want to change your mood, change your breath. Small children, you can just, if they're sleeping left, make them right. If they're right, make them left. If they're behaving cranky, if they're normal, it's okay. They'll do it on their own. 
you don't have to do it so th- so that is the first state of breathing now another one is armpit pressure now armpit pressure is very interesting you you can do this adi mudra all of you do like this put your thumb below at the base of uh, this pinky finger uh, at the base of pinky and make a fist and keep it below your armpit so whichever nostril you want to open keep it on the other side so you want to open right so i am keeping under the left under the left armpit so if i am keeping under the left my left channel will block and right will start within few minutes my right will start so this armpit one is quite uh, practical you can do it when you are at home but if you go for an interview you have to change your breath there are better techniques we'll discuss that obviously in front of a boss you you're sitting in front of the boss you can't sit like this you say what what's wrong so no 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 wait wait arun sharma told me to change the breath to realize better results out of this meeting that that is not possible another one the easier one is you know you can keep a tennis ball in your armpit your breath would change if you don't want to do this adi mudra you can also do with the tennis ball you can just keep a tennis ball huh? at home your breath would change somebody was asking if i have to leave home immediately what do i you can do this you can change your breath from left to right right to left whatever is required then certain kind of foods will also food what you eat will change your breath now this is very very practical what you eat will depend uh, which nostril you want to activate if you are going for a meeting we'll discuss that in some other class meeting techniques what to eat and what not to eat if somebody offers you a cup of tea whether to take that cup of tea or if somebody offers you a cool drink whether you should accept that cool drink so it will depend on certain situations if you take a a good quality pure honey a spoonful of honey your left nostril will start within few minutes if you eat yogurt your left nostril will start if you eat banana your left nostril will start if you eat any any cool drink for some time left will start yes similarly if you are taking uh, if you are taking desi ghee your right nostril will start if you take desi ghee your right nostril will start then if you are eating a pickle or chili your right nostril will start especially ginger pickle it will activate your right almost uh, within few seconds hot soup hot ginger tea your right nostril will start so in winters if you take hot ginger tea you feel better because your right nostril starts you your body gets that heat now as i told you when you go for a meeting and you want your left nostril to be active why why do you want we'll discuss that later um, the meeting techniques we can discuss later so you can keep you know that polo that mint in your pocket you can also keep ginger lozenges in your pocket so what you do keep in your left pocket that polo that mint and keep in your right pocket you know why i'm telling you to keep separate pockets because you're sitting in a meeting or when you're you're in a public place uh, you you don't want to be confused so take out quietly take out one log- one you know mint from your left pocket and put it in your mouth within few seconds your left will start operating this is the easiest way you you have that those lin- uh, ginger lozenges keep it in the right pocket you want your right nostril to be operative keep it in your mouth your right will become operative now even bathing will change the uh, breath you know if you take a 
cold water bath, your left nostril will get activated. If you take a hot water bath, your right will get activated. But cold water bath is much better because your vagus nerve also gets activated. So not only your left breath will get activated, your vagus nerve will get activated. And vagus nerve has many other advantages. Some In some other session, we will discuss that. And cotton ball, I already discussed. If you keep it in your left ear, right will get activated. If you keep it in the right, the left will get activated. See, if you're having mild fever, or if you're having uh, acidity, or if you're having common cold, now what do you do? The simple breath technique can help you to resolve that. What do you do? Change your breath from right to left if you want to, if you are suffering from acidity or you're having mild fever. Just change from right to left. Try to keep more left. Your fever would decline. Your acidity might vanish. So try it out. Try it out. So with breath, we'll discuss many other disease, uh, how to get rid of those diseases only through breath. Common cold, if you're having cold, that means body has more coolness. Make Operate your right nostril. Operate more your right nostril. So you'll get rid of the common cold. If you take hot coffee, your right nostril will start. Mm, what else? Uh, there, there could be some other, I, I don't remember. Uh, so when it comes to my mind, we'll also discuss those techniques. Now the question is, how do you activate Sushumna? Because sometimes we need to activate. It's a prayer time. You have to do prayers or you have to go to church or you have to do some, uh, you know, uh, spiritual activity, religious activity at home. So you must do it in Sushumna. The results will be much better. You'll enjoy those activities. So how do you activate that? Can anybody give this answer? Using both, uh, both hands under both Yes, that is one technique. That is one technique, yes. The easiest technique is Anulom Vilom. And do it rhythmically. Do it in a rhythm. So you do your hand like this, make a fist, keep both your hands like this. Below your armpit. Yes. This will activate your Sushumna. So word of advice to all of you, before you go for meditation, sit in this posture for at least two minutes. Catherine, try it out tonight. Okay, right sit in this right posture right right. and then go for meditation. Gopal also is a meditator. You can also try it out like this tonight. Okay. So Arunji, as you said, if we cross one leg, uh, so one of the nostrils gets blocked. So if we cross both the legs, I mean, if we are in Vajra Asana, so we are uh, just stopping, uh, would that help in uh, activating? No. no. Vajra Asana does not activate uh, Sushumna. No. I think the lotus posture may activate it. Lotus posture may activate. Yes, you are right. Because you are blocking both your channels. Uh, That's why please. they recommend you to do meditation in lotus posture. Yes. Okay. Yes. No, Arunji, no. when uh, for this uh, Sushumna activation, while you have to cross the uh, hand and keep it under the armpit, is there any rule that you left over right or right over left? No, you can do either way. Either way. Either. Both are right. Uh, both are right. Okay, now let's go move forward. We'll discuss about uh, lunar calendar. We all understand 
solar calendar we understand which is the english calendar but some of us uh, are not familiar with lunar calendar now lunar calendar also has 12 months same as english calendar huh? so lunar calendar and solar calendar there is a bit of difference there is a difference of 11 days every year in lunar calendar and solar calendar so solar has 365 days a year lunar has got 11 less so that means 354 uh, 354 days in a in a year so every 3 years there is a correction to match the lunar calendar and solar calendar we have one extra month in lunar calendar and that month is called extra month or adhik mass and it's considered that during that adhik mass you should do spiritual acts you should do charity you should do all kinds of good acts during that month it's considered very auspicious and holy so every 3 year you have one month to carry out your spiritual activities now this lunar calendar has got two fortnights one fortnight is called krishna paksh other one is called shukla paksh shukla paksh means when the moon is going towards full moon purnima when moon is going towards full moon and then it is shukla paksh when moon is going towards amavasya uh, when it is going towards no moon then it is called krishna paksh krishna is waxing moon shukla is waning moon 15 days 15 days now the interesting thing about the lunar calendar is the two fortnight two paksh is sometimes you have only 14 days sometimes you can also have 16 days but typically it will have only 15 days so after like in english calendar you have first second third fourth today is fourth so tomorrow is going to be fifth but in in Uh, lunar calendar if today is fourth tomorrow may, may be fifth or may not be fifth it could be sixth also so that is the uh, beauty of lunar calendar later on i can tell you to download one app uh, the app which i am using that you can download uh, to get familiar with lunar calendar that app is called drik panchang i am using that app you all also can use the same app drik panchang so that is to get familiar with the lunar calendar now why are we talking about this because this your breath follows lunar calendar your body follows lunar calendar your body has 72% water so that's why your body is more attracted towards moon so when there is a bigger moon when there is a full moon your body reacts to that that's why the words are lunatic moon struck all the romantic stories are written based on moon as i told you 15 days 15 days in both the fortnights so if it is shukla paksh or it is krishna paksh so we'll have we'll make 1 2 3 as as one category then 4 5 6 another category then 7 8 9 so we you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 so, so how many categories are there five so five category so month was divided into two fortnights each fortnight i'm dividing into five it's very simple now first three days in shukla paksh your left nostril just remember left for the time being we'll discuss this left nostril is operative just remember so 1 2 3 left then 3 4 5 6 right so left right left right left left right left right left if it is krishna paksh it will be 
one, four, five, six, same. So it will be right, left, right, left, right. In Shukla Paksh, it will start with left. Just remember, Shukla Paksh will start with left. That's all. And then it is alternate. Krishna Paksh will start with right. So one, two, three will be right. In Shukla Paksh, it will be one, two, three will be left. Now, can anybody tell me what is the lunar date as on today? Uh, Krishna Paksh uh, Shasti. Asad, yes. Krishna Paksh Sashti, absolutely. Sixth day. So where are you following? One, two, three, four, five, six. So you are here. So you are Krishna Paksh. He said Krishna Paksh. So, so you are here. So right, left. Yes. Right, left. So you are here. Krishna Paksh Sashti. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So here in Krishna Paksh. So Krishna Paksh starts with right. So right, left. So you are under the influence of left nostril. Now, when is Amavasya? So 29th June is your Amavasya. That means no moon day. Krishna Paksh, so it will have no moon day. After that will be Shukla Paksh. So Prati Prada, that means the first day of the fortnight, we have to do certain practice. So it will be Shukla Paksh after this. So on 30th June, you have to do a certain kind of practice. So in the next class, we'll discuss about it. I would like to close with this, that if you have a physical body, physical body minus breath is equivalent to death. Spiritual body minus soul is equal to death. We wind up over here. Anybody has a question? Not sure. But... Normally, we take any beverages with left nostril dominance. Left nostril dominance. Normally but we that, take solid food with right nostril when yeah, the right is dominant and we take all liquid with when the left is dominant. Anybody else has any question? Uh, related to this, uh, the uh, vexing mood of okay, face, that is Krishna Paksh, um, sorry, we, uh, weaning one. The Krishna Paksh um, phase is considered uh, like we should do auspicious act charities during that uh, all the auspicious um, activities should be done. It's, it's something I have heard uh, uh, over the period of time. So uh, what's the reasoning behind no, we, that? We will discuss this uh, for uh, related to charity. There are certain rules, breath rules are there. Uh, we'll discuss that. Uh, that's a very important aspect. When to do charity and how to do charity. We will discuss that. But uh, uh, what you said that in Krishna Paksh you should do, uh, there is no such thing as that. You, no, you, can, uh, you can do auspicious act in both. Uh, normally we, we do, do auspicious act more in uh, Shukla Paksh. Uh, okay. When the moon is going towards yes, moon is growing, Yeah, yeah. I, I heard it opposite. Uh, yeah, I, I heard that we should avoid some auspicious uh, yes. acts during the Krishna Paksh. Yes, yeah. Yes. Because um, the moon is weaning, so, and when it's uh, going towards the full moon, we should do the good act. When it is going towards full moon, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It is Shukla Paksh, yes. Okay, okay. We do that. And also, uh, there is another concept here. We, if it is Shukla Paksh and it is Uttarayan, then it is even better. Okay. Uttarayan is when uh, the sun is from 21st uh, December to 21st uh, June, sun rises in the east, sun sets in the west. We all know that. But it travels from north. From east to west, it goes via north. And east to west, it goes via south. So six months, it goes via north. That is Uttarayan. So it travels via north. That is 
uh, from 21st December to 21st June. Now this tw today is what 19th June, isn't it? After two days, Dakshinayan will start. That means we don't do any auspicious act during these six months. Because we say in the Devalok, it will be night for six months. Equinox, is it? Equinox is when, yeah, yes, yes. When uh, sun travels from uh, uh, east to west via north, and at the midpoint, when day and night are equal, then that is called equinox. Huh. Mm -hmm. And similarly, when it is, it has got a south southward journey, and when it is equal, then it is called equinox. So there are two days of equinox, just between twenty first June and twenty uh, first uh, December, exactly the midday. The days between that will be called equinox. But uh, from uh, that Adhik mass, every three year that one extra month is considered very, very auspicious. Hmm. For spiritual practices, you can get certain extra siddhis during that month. About the rest, 5 billion population on earth, they, they don't follow any of this uh, technique. So uh, many have married uh, from June to December. So to have a healthy marriage or a or non-affair marriage, what they have to continue to do? Be, be in that doorway meditation, be into awareness, because if you are in awareness, all the ills and all the negativity is burnt out. Awareness is the highest solution to all human problems. So be in awareness at all the time. You, you, you are happy, huh? There is an occasion of happiness, but don't indulge into happiness. Be into that awareness that yes, it's the happy occasion. So you keep yourself distinct with that happiness. Similarly, when there is unhappiness, you keep yourself distinct with that unhappiness. So you, you be an observer, you, you be into awareness. So any kind of negativity is burnt out if you're in awareness. The highest purpose of human life is to heighten your awareness. Somebody was asking about the not drinking milk, but on the what is that Sharat Purnima day, we make a kheer and all that na, in the moonlight, and uh, yeah. it is offered and it is supposed to be auspicious drink. Yeah, it becomes nectar on that day. Yeah, yes. nectar. Of, yeah, so I didn't understand that. See, there are uh, there could be difference from. Yeah, neither did I, but I just heard. And, and certain locations, you see, certain locations are afflicted with certain uh, uh, radiation. So mm -hmm. you know, uh, some what is right for um, one city may not be right for the other city. Mm -hmm. So there could be you know geographical differences could add to that. Yeah, with regards to traveling, you know, when you're traveling over long distances and you're moving through different time zones, and how will that affect what you have actually said? Will it complicate matters? Or do you still stick to where your origin was and maintain that calendar over? No, wherever uh, you have to man maintain the calendar of the location where you are. Today, if you're in New York, so just uh, in the settings, go to settings, Make it New York into that, and whatever then whatever uh, it shows, you know, calculate sunrise, sunset time, and all that. Because we'll discuss that sunrise, sunset time. There are many other aspects, so you have to follow the local calendar always. The same app is valid. Only thing you have to just change the location. Okay. If there are no other questions, then we'll wind up. Or you can write the question in the uh, in the group chat. You write it in the chat. We can discuss it in the chat also. If anybody of you have got questions, you can write into the you know YouTube video. So the YouTube video is there. You can write your questions in the YouTube video also. So you write your comments also over there in the YouTube video. Write your questions also over there. And all of us can answer that question. Not only me alone. All of us can answer. <laughs> 